bashing countless zombies' heads in with large blunt objects, slicing through more of said zombies with chainsaws, blowing through them with shotguns, and driving over large swaths of them with trucks. These are just a few of the countless ways you can slay the undead in the gloriously gory and delightfully stupid Dead Rising games. Much like Frank wildly smashing his way through legions of zombies, the Dead Rising games carved out their own weird space in the action genre, and even managed to stand out despite the fact that zombie games are a dime a dozen and have been for some time. It was just something about the wackiness of Dead Rising, its willingness to completely surrender to the absurdities and to any and every stupid possibility you can come up with about ways to destroy zombies. That keeps this series solidly in its own area and retaining its own identity in a crowded genre. As you might expect, this wild type of addicting zombie killing action would go on to spawn several sequels, re-releases, and even a couple of movies. Yet, as a franchise, it now seems dormant. With the latest game in the series being released back in 2016, we haven't heard much from the creators over at Capcom about a fifth entry or really anything at all for the series. But why is that? Why would a series with so much love all over the world and so many longtime fans chomping at the bit for another reason to dive back into this ridiculous world have we not gotten any more games from the series? What the hell happened to Dead Rising? Dead Rising started off as a quirky little trip into a wacky world of zombie bashing. As an Xbox and Window exclusive title at launch, Dead Rising immediately drew in a fair amount of fans from its fun mix of completing open world style mission objectives, leveling Frank West up and upgrading his weapons and abilities, and of course destroying wave after wave of endless zombie hordes. While the story and characters were largely nothing to write home about, it all did come together with such confidence that you could totally buy into it as a player and have plenty of fun smashing your way through the game to see one of the several possible endings. The style and tone of the game came from a clear inspiration from old school zombie movies, particularly from the George A. Romero variety, and it showed with its blatant disregard for realism and emphasis on the sheer entertainment factor. As a game that was clearly just meant to be a fun romp for those who needed a distraction from work or perhaps a bit of an outlet for some aggression, it actually saw more success than it was likely bargaining for, while most sillier games of Dead Rising's variety tend to get lots of fives or sixes from the mainstream game reviewer community, this game would see lots of eights and nines for the most part. Only a few complaints about how vulnerable Frank is while using the radio and a few other small things were mentioned, but all in all, Dead Rising was a hit. It would be a few years before Dead Rising 2 would land on store shelves, but the wait would be worth it, as Dead Rising 2 largely just built on what the first game game got right and added a little bit of its own flavor on top of it, with a new character and a new story set several years after the events of the first game. Of the most notable changes, Dead Rising 2 would introduce an online co-op mode and a much deeper weapon creation system where the players could customize their own weapons at a level that had not really been seen in that genre yet. This combined with noticeable improvements to the AI made Dead Rising 2 what many thought was a pinnacle for the series that would likely not be topped. Reviewers agreed and the game was received about as well as the original was for largely the same reasons. Dead Rising 3 was perhaps where the cracks in the series were starting to show in some ways. The tried and true elements were there, lots of zombies, a hokey story, and lots of gratifying ways to dispatch the undead, but the game did suffer from its fair share of technical issues including frame rate dips, screen tearing, clipping, and other things of that sort from time to time, despite being developed around the much more capable Xbox One. The story also didn't really fit well with the previous two games and thus the expectations of its core audience. It also didn't help much that the new character, Nick Ramos, wasn't nearly as interesting or fitting as Chuck or Frank were. Despite this game being firmly in the Dead Rising series, it just took a couple too many liberties with the series that didn't pan out too well. And even though it was a totally decent game in its own right, this is where the series was clearly beginning to show its lack of ability to move forward with worthy sequels and grow with its audience. Dead Rising 4 would continue down the dangerous road of not evolving in any meaningful way. Again, the most important elements were there with fun weapons, 
hordes of zombies, and a multiplayer mode. It even appeared to return to a somewhat more colorful visual style of the original two games, and even brought Frank West back to drive the back to basics concept totally home. Interestingly, the story in the fourth game could be the best in the series, and many of the additional side stories and collectibles added more replay value than perhaps any game before it. However, Dead Rising 4 did get in its own way yet again with some technical issues and the removal of some longtime elements like the timer. There were also some more bullet spongy zombie varieties added whose inclusion seemed to go against the mentality of the previous games that were fun because of the ease of slaughtering many zombies at once. As a result of these minor missteps, Dead Rising 4 would sell roughly half of the 2 million copies that Capcom was aiming for, and that is how you kill a franchise. To be fair to Capcom, it is hard to stretch such a simple concept as Dead Rising all the way out to four full games without either getting into that repetitive more of the same territory or going the other way and making too many changes that go against what longtime fans want. It's a delicate balance to hold on to, and while there is some debate to be had about which game is the best and which game is the worst, sales numbers don't lie. Dead Rising 4's inability to get fans of the original two games to come back and bring in enough new players to justify a fifth game is largely what happened to the series. That's not to say it's gone for good, though, with a new console generation looming on the horizon and developers looking to take creative risks to gain as much attention as possible. Who's to say that Dead Rising won't be back with a vengeance one day? That's it for this video. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you'll be notified when new videos go up.